So in previous videos, I showed you guys how to identify the outcomes that you're going to need when you're extracting data for a systematic review or a meta-analysis. And then I also showed you how to identify your comparison groups or your study arms when you're extracting data. But you may be wondering, okay, I've looked through these articles and I've done all that, but now I've got all these little numbery thingies. Which ones do I need? Well, let's talk about how to identify the results, that is to say the actual measures that you need for your systematic review or meta-analysis. So you need to capture a bunch of different things when you are carrying out a meta-analysis or systematic review. You need to capture information on design characteristics, you need to identify the study arms, the intervention exposure characteristics, also sometimes called arms details. You need to really focus in on the outcomes of interest for you and how those are measured. And finally, you need to capture the results. And these are the actual measures of the outcome variables. Well, the problem is extracting results can be really pretty confusing. Okay, Knowing what data you need for the meta-analysis is going to help you figure out what information you need to extract on the results from the article. That is, if you have a clear sense of what measures you need to calculate a pooled effect size in a meta-analysis, then it's going to be easier to know what to look for. And even if you can't carry out a meta-analysis because maybe it's not theoretically or you know practically feasible, that's okay. At least you will have captured the right results. So I'm going to do this by using a handy tool from the Brown University Evidence Space Practice Center to help us identify the data we need for meta-analysis. So we'll know what data to extract from the article. The tool is called Open Meta Analyst, and it's a free program funded by AHRQ, and it's for carrying out meta-analyses. And here's the URL. You can go there and download a free copy. And when you start it, at least in the Mac version, it offers this really awesome little uh, wizard to help you identify what data you're going to need for your meta-analysis. And it does this by first asking, what kind of data do you have? So you see you have at the row at the top when you have studies for, uh, or information from one group. In the middle row, uh, data from two or more studies, or two, not two or more studies, two or more groups in the study. And then at the bottom, data on test performance. But let's walk through this and see if we can get a bit more concrete. So let's say your question is comparing the effects of two treatments or maybe a treatment versus a controller placebo as you see in many clinical trials. You'll probably be looking at a comparison between two means. So let's look at that one first. So here we've got the beginning of the wizard um, in Open Meta Analyst. And remember, what we're going to do is look at what results we need to capture when we are comparing two uh, groups and we're looking at the means. So we're going to look down here at the mean versus mean, two groups, right? Continue. Um, we can just keep the mean difference. That is, let's assume that our outcomes are measured the same way in the different studies. Then I click Continue. Let's just put in a uh, hold, placeholder and call it BMI. Now let's look at what we need here. And if you notice, right up here in the yellow, we're looking at the mean difference. So this is going to be if our question is about the difference in effects of, say, two different treatments or a treatment versus a placebo. What we're looking for is the between group difference at the time point we're looking at, say, six months, 12 months, whatever. Okay, so this is the between group difference and the upper lower um, confidence interval. But let's say that our authors don't give us the between group difference. They only give us, say, the within group or the change scores for each of our two groups. Well, then what we've got, we just need to capture the N, the mean change score, and the standard deviation or standard error for um, one group, and then the N, the mean, and the standard deviation, the change score for our second group. But let's say that the author is being really lazy and doesn't even give us that. Well, over here, uh, we can punch on that little calculator button, and it's going to give us even more detail. So in this case, if I have the pre, uh, I need the mean, pre and post, okay, the mean, the N pre and post, the mean pre and post, 
for one group and then some measure of the dispersion. If I have that for both of my groups, then I know that I can calculate the change score and then from the change score, I know I can calculate my between group error. So I have lots of options here in terms of what I can capture. Now, as you saw, what we really need is a between measures of between group differences and some measure of the dispersion, say standard deviation, standard uh, error, uh, confidence interval, or the exact p-value at the time points that you're interested in. But failing uh, having that, what you can do is get the within group differences, that is the change scores and then some measure of dispersion for the two comparison groups at the different time points you're interested. But let's say that they don't give you the between group differences and they don't, the authors don't give you the within group differences or change scores. What then? Well, you can uh, calculate those things if you can get the me uh, ends, the means, and the measures of dispersion, and there are several of them, at each of the time points in your study. So you have lots of different options, but the ones you really want are the between group differences and the confidence interval. Now, I typically try to capture or extract out all of these pieces of information because sometimes as I get into a meta-analysis or systematic review, my question may change a little bit, and this way I've gathered all the data. Now, other times you may be looking at whether two groups differ in terms of whether an event happened or not. And very often, in this case, you're going to be looking at an odds ratio or a risk ratio. Now, since a ratio, if you think about it, is just a proportion, we, we can look at comparing two group proportions. So here we are back at the beginning of the wizard, and we know we're looking at two proportions. So let's click on that button. Now, when I click continue, I have um, some options here. I can choose odds ratio. The two you're probably going to be looking at are either odds ratio or risk ratio. All right, but let's just say we're needing the odds ratio. So we'll go here and we'll just talk about, again, just put in a placeholder here. Um, now, what we need is, from an article is the odds ratio, or if we're looking at the risk ratio, the risk ratio, and you can just pull that from the article, and then the upper and lower confidence interval. But again, let's say that the authors don't give us uh, the upper and lower confidence interval. What can we pull in besides that? Well, as long as we have the number of events that happened, and let's say it's you know relapse or the you know people in a group being obese, whatever it is, we have the number of, in the, of events in that group and the total number of people in that group, subjects in that group, and we have that for both. Uh, both of our comparison groups, then we, that's all we need to be able to capture or calculate our odds ratio. So really pretty simple. Now, what you need, of course, are the odds or the risk ratio and the confidence interval at the time points that you're interested in. But failing that, we saw that you can, as long as you can get the number of events that happened and the total n in each of the comparison groups, then you'll have what you need to carry out the analysis with, with uh, comparing two proportions. Sometimes, though, authors haven't defined two or more exposure groups. In these cases, they often report a regression coefficient. Now, in observational studies where authors are interested in the relationship between a continuous measure of the independent or exposure variable and the outcome variable, which is also continuous, they often model the relationship using some type of linear model, like a, a simple or multiple regression, a random effects model, hierarchical model, etc. Those are all variations on a linear model. And what they have in common is they're going to give you a regression coefficient. So let's see what we need to capture in that situation. So if we need to capture a regression coefficient, well, what data do we need? Let's look up here where it says regression coefficient. Click continue. Nothing we really need to do here. And let's just, again, add a placeholder and look at what we need. Well, over here, it says treatment mean, but what this one is, is the regression coefficient. So if the author gives you the regression coefficient 
and the upper and lower confidence intervals for the regression coefficient, the beta, you've got what you need. If they don't, then what you can do is capture the regression coefficient and calculate the upper and lower confidence intervals from a mean, standard deviation, or any of these other uh, measures. Very often you'll see a standard error reported and from that you can calculate your confidence interval. So again, get the regression coefficient and then any of the other types of measures dispersion of that and bingo, you're, all, you're golden. So we see that I can capture the regression coefficient, the beta, and the confidence interval at the time point I'm interested in, but if they don't report the confidence interval, I can still capture the regression coefficient and then also capture the n and then either the standard error or the exact p-value and I've got everything I need. So what I'm saying is that you can use Open Meta Analyst to identify what types of result data you'll need to capture from the article. Oh, and one last thing. You may be wondering, well, what do I do when the author doesn't report any measure of dispersion error? You know, doesn't report standard deviation, standard error, confidence interval, or the exact p-value. What if they just give you like a little asterisk and say less than 0.05? What do you enter into Open Meta Analyst? Well, hopefully you don't run into this very often, but if you do, use the following guideline. If they indicate that you know the p-value is less than 0.05 well just enter 0.05 or less than 0.01 enter 0.01 less than 0.001 enter 0.001 you get the idea well and if they enter not significant okay just enter 1.0 now the thing is entering these values is going to give you an overly conservative estimate of the dispersion of error but depending on your needs this may be better than leaving the study out altogether. Now, if you do that, you're going to need to let your reader know what you did and interpret accordingly. 